JCF mourns death of second officer in as many days. The Jamaica Constable Force JCF has been plunged into mourning once more following the passing of a detective sergeant. The deceased is Willie Portal, a veteran lawman who died at the University Hospital of the West Indies on Sunday. Reporters understand he was admitted there on Thursday for an undisclosed medical issue. This is the second member of the JCF to die in as many days. On Friday, a police corporal attached to the Center for Investigations of Sexual Offenses and Child Abuse Isoka died after complaining of not feeling well. He was taken to the hospital where he later died. It is unclear what caused the corporal's sudden illness. Westmoreland records first murder for 2024. After ending 2023 with 117 people killed, Westmoreland recorded its first murder of the year on Saturday night. According to the police, a man identified as 39-year-old Delford Cook, also known as Crumbs the Laborer, was shot dead by an unknown assailant at about 10 p.m. in Black East District in the parish. Reports from the police indicate that Cook was inside his dwelling when he was confronted by a lone gunman who opened fire, hitting him in the face and chest. The gunman then escaped on foot in the area. The now deceased was later discovered by neighbors. The police were summoned and on their arrival, Cook was observed lying on his back suffering from multiple gunshot wounds. He was transported to the Savannah Elmar Public General Hospital where he was pronounced dead. Preliminary investigation reveals burnt out plane in St. Elizabeth registered in Venezuela. Local aviation officials are set to make contact with their Venezuelan counterparts as they continue their probe into the burnt out plane found in St. Elizabeth on Friday night. This latest development follows the discovery among the wreckage of a partial registration number YV, which is the aircraft registration prefix for Venezuela. Reporters also understand that the aircraft and engine data plates appear to have been removed as investigators did not find them. It has also been revealed that checks made by the Jamaica Civil Aviation Authority show that the aircraft did not operate from any of the island's airports. The contact with INAC, the Venezuelan Civil Aviation Authority, is to trace the aircraft to its owner. The wreckage of the aircraft was found in a swamp in the Elam Brazilian area northeast of Santa Cruz. The area, which forms part of the Upper Black River Maras, is reported to have been used as a landing site for a small aircraft decades ago when the ganja export trade flourished. A police source told reporters that on Saturday, Bamboo with lights attached were reportedly seen on either sides of a road using as a makeshift airstrip. A preliminary probe into the circumstances surrounding the discovery of the burnt out aircraft included a theory that the plane might have been involved in suspicious activity. 18 gun seized in first week of New Year, 10 people arrested. The Jamaica Constabulary Force JCF is reporting that several intelligence-led operations were carried out in the first week of the new year and they led to the seizure of 18 firearms including three rifles. Almost half of the 18 were seized in Police Era 3 with St. Elizabeth and Clarendon together accounting for eight illegal weapons now off the street, a release from the Police High Command has stated. The corporate area divisions of St. Andrew North and St. Andrew Central account for another six of the seizures while the streets of St. James are no safer following the siege of poor guns. Ten persons have been taken into custody in connection with these seizures. The police continue to urge persons with information that can lead to the siege of illegal guns and the arrest of gunmen and gangsters to call Crime Stop at 311, the National Intelligence Bureau tip line at 811, the police 119 number or the nearest police station. Three teens arrested over bus park stopping in St. Anne. Three teens were arrested on Saturday over the stabbing of a 15-year-old boy at the Brownstone Bus Park in St. Anne. The injured boy remains hospitalized. Those arrested are being held on suspicion of only with intent. It is reported that about 8 p.m., the 15-year-old was at the bus park when a dispute developed between him and the three other teens, ages 14, 15, and 16. A knife was brought into play and he was stabbed several times in the upper body. He reported a run from the scene and was rescued by relatives who rushed him to the St. Ansby Hospital. He was admitted for injuries received. A report was subsequently made to the Brownstone Police 
and an investigation led to the arrest of the three teenagers. Policemen arrested after being held with ganja, cash and station compound. A 28-year-old police constable assigned to the guards room of the Montego Bay Police Station in St. James has been arrested on reasonable suspicion of possession and dealing in ganja. The constable was found with contraband and cash on the police station's compound on Friday. He was reportedly seated in his car when a search was conducted by cops. Thousands of dollars and a host of contraband were reportedly uncovered during the search. The constable was then arrested. He is expected to be formally charged. Commissioner Toad's Aggressive Modernization and Transformation of JCF Police Commissioner Major General Anthony Anderson has asserted that the Jamaica Constabulary Force is undergoing an aggressive program of modernization and transformation. Among the changes he highlighted on Friday is the expansion and enhancement of the workforce. The police commissioner said the work being done is part of the policy direction of the government to enhance the fight against crime and violence. He added that members of the JCF have undergone extensive training to boost the capacity of the force. The vision of the Jamaica Constabulary Force is to be a force that is not only larger, but more skilled, more capable, and better equipped to handle the complexities of modern policing, he stated. Opposition urges government to do more to reduce inflation. The parliamentary opposition wants government to be proactive in keeping inflation down. Inflation is projected to remain elevated due to various factors affecting international trade and global logistics. But Anthony Hilton, opposition spokesperson on industry, investment and global logistics, is raising concern that the fight to keep inflation within the range set by the Bank of Jamaica will be lost using only monetary policy tools. This he contends is largely due to geopolitical tensions in the Middle East, low vessel capacity at the Panama Canal, forecast for an active hurricane season, and the effects of recent drought on domestic agriculture. Pointing to possible solutions, Mr. Hilton said the Consumer Affairs Commission and Fair Trading Commission should be more active in ensuring price increases are minimized and businesses are more efficient in their operations. He added that the government has a fiscal space to act creatively and decisively in encouraging the adoption of technology and innovation to bring about improvements in energy efficiency, customs and supply chain and logistics. Hope in violence rocks Salt Spring after 40 days of prayer. Salt Spring resident Rochelle Crowley McKenzie says it was mere coincidence that she came up with the idea of having the committee engage in 40 days of prayer in the hope of restoring peace and safety to close what was a bloody 2023 for St. James neighborhood. However, the religious significance cannot be missed as some Christians view Jesus' 40 day fasting in the wilderness as told in the scriptures as a test of faith and strength to overcome human frailties. According to her, the need for a community-based response to the violence was evident as children and adults were fearful for their lives after multiple double murders and a triple murder. Crowley McKenzie told reporters that after their plans to host a community walkthrough were stunned by the police advice against gathering, she came up with the idea to host a virtual initiative with the help of the churches and the Salt Spring Community Development Committee CDC. I was just sitting one day and the thought came to me that we need to continue in prayer so I had the idea to have other pastors who were supporting us to take part in the original initiative to just pray for a Salt Spring for the rest of the year, said Crowley McKenzie. She is the president of Salt Spring Community Outreach Program for Empowerment. She said the initiative kicked off on November 21 and ended on New Year's Eve and why she was disappointed but they were unable to gather in prayer with the residents Crowley McKenzie said the community groups were effective in bringing the word to the residents. We started with pastors praying every morning for the community, sending prayers out to the various community groups. We used the church groups, the community-based organization groups, and the CDC groups, she told the reporters. From the 18th to the 24th of December, we had seven days of fasting, so instead of one prayer each morning, we had three prayers. I made a roster, so whichever church was responsible for that day, they had two additional evangelists from that church praying for the community, said Crowley McKenzie. While last year's fear of violence drove fear into the community, Crowley McKenzie told reporters that residents were left feeling a sense of peace after the prayer initiative ended. The president also pointed out 
that the Jamaica Constabulary Force and other state agencies have played a significant role in restoring this level of calm across the community. So far, the testimonies have been great coming from the community. We are hopeful as the sense of fear that was pervasive throughout the community when the violence flared up the other day is not the same, she explained. The residents interacted and engaged with the parents in the groups. One person messaged me to say it was a very brilliant initiative and she's feeling more hopeful. Everybody came together, hands, heart and purse to do this, Kuala McKenzie added. Pastor Call Wisdom of Salt Spring Pentecostal Church believed the 40 days of prayer initiative came at a time when the people of Salt Spring were living in fear for their lives. He echoed the belief that it has restored faith and peace in the community. I think it accomplished what it was supposed to do, and it was well received by the residents. The other ministers that I have spoken to, although it was a needed move, people in the community said that it brought back a sense of calm, peace and safety again. It was good for all the churches joined together, Pastor Wisdom told reporters. Reverend Conrad Thomas of Salt Spring Baptist Church agreed, saying that the 40 days of prayer was a perfect response by the community groups and churches at a time when violence brought the hearts and homes of the residents. I think that was the kind of response that ought to be given by the community and it punctuated with so many churches. There are several responses that we could have given to the situation in Salt Spring. I believe the security forces responded and I believe that the church in collaboration with the community responded, said Reverend Thomas. I believe it created a dent in the community because no point did I come across anybody in the community after the institution of 40 days of prayer who said they were fearful. It did not affect the people coming to worship. While pointing out that the police also played their part, Reverend Thomas said he was happy that the efforts brought joy to the community. In addition to the 40 days of prayer, we as a church were engaged in personal prayer and fasting. I believe that the combination with the police created the kind of impact we witnessed to the point that we are able to host our Christmas tree lighting ceremony, he stated. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.